everybody, this is Maya Joy Kana. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's video is part one of a three part series on psychic burnout. And in this video, we are going to be talking about what psychic burnout or spiritual burnout, about what it is, as well as what causes it and why it is relevant to the Twin Flame community. In part two, we're going to be talking about the signs and symptoms of psychic burnout. And in the third video, we will be talking about how to heal and recover from psychic burnout. So what is psychic burnout? Well, psychic burnout or spiritual exhaustion, as some people call it, is a state of being in which our subtle energies and our psychic energies become very, very depleted and end up wearing us out spiritually. So psychic burnout is similar to other types of burnout that you might already know about. For example, um, adrenal fatigue is a hot topic right now. Adrenal fatigue is when our physical bodies, adrenaline, get so low that we can't produce it anymore and we become physically burnt out. Another form of burnout is chronic fatigue. When we have chronic fatigue, that is the burnout of our physical body, where our physical body is crying out for us to give more attention and love and nutrients to our body. And many people also know about mental breakdowns where people become so they go such a long time without attending to their mental health that all of a sudden they sort of get to the bottom and they just break. So psychic burnout is similar to this. It happens when people who are psychic or who are empaths or who have natural healing abilities end up using these abilities all the time, all of the time, always psychically tuned in or always tuned in using our healing energies and then all of a sudden we find ourselves getting more and more depleted. So when once we were so, so happy, right, to do some shamanic journeying or to do meditation or to, you know, to help people by giving them spiritual advice or to trade readings with friends or stuff like that, when once that was so fun and just really lit us up, all of a sudden over time it starts to feel like a burden and when we go into tune in psychically or to help someone with their healing, it's like we have nothing left to give. Many, many people I believe in the Twin Flame community are experiencing psychic burnout and they're not really sure what it is or how to recover. And I believe that psychic burnout is something that I believe hits Twin Flames harder than people who are not coming into a Twin Flame union. And the reason why is because the twin flame process, the process of healing and merging with our twin flame is so incredibly taxing on our energy body and it takes so much psychic energy. So even though we can't see this energy, if we are, you know, thinking about our twin flame, if we are interacting with our twin flame and especially if we are having physical encounters with our twin flame, our energy body is just lit up with tons and tons of psychic and healing energy that is running through it. And so even, so if you're a twin flame and you're coming to union, um, even if you are not employed professionally as a psychic or a healer, you could still be experiencing psychic burnout, especially if you have the mindset of wanting to like help your twin all the time and help yourself heal and you know, help other twin flames, which many, many, many of us do. And I've heard a lot of people say that they feel burnt out, that they feel depleted, or that they think that they're going through Dark Night of the Soul over and over again. My understanding is that Dark Night of the Soul is something that usually catalyzes our spiritual awakening, um, and it's usually something that happens once. Could be a very extended amount of time, but it's usually something that happens once. So my sense of this is that people are actually like cycling through these dark phases in part because their psychic energies get so burnt out. Um, and so generally psychic burnout is sort of a condition that is affiliated with professional psychics, professional healers, people who do this work full time 
all the time. Um, but I think that psychic burnout is touching many, 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 many twin flames. And a lot of people who get to that point where they're, you know, at first so passionate, like so, so passionate about their twin flame and about this journey. And then they get to the point all of a sudden where it's like, you know what, I'm done with this twin flame journey. This is stupid. I don't want to heal myself anymore. I want to walk away from this and I want to walk away from spirituality altogether or I don't even want to be here anymore. Like you hear that all the time in the twin flame uh, community. People are abandoning this journey. Um, and I believe that it is because in some cases that they are so burnt out spiritually that they have nothing left to give. So I wanted to take a moment um, and talk about what causes psychic burnout? Basically, what causes psychic burnout is uh, being tuned in spiritually all of the time. So even though we don't see the energy uh, physically, most people do not see the energy physically that is operating or that's running through us when we're trying to heal ourselves or heal our twin flame or help a friend or things like that. There's an energy that's being transmitted. Um, and so when we have psychic burnout, it's because we are outputting too much um, psychic energy or subtle energies, right? And so this can happen um, from spending your entire day focusing on spirituality. Like some people get so excited about this healing process that they're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wake up and I'm going to meditate for two hours. <laughs> and then after I meditate for two hours, I am going to, you know, I'm going to listen to a spiritual podcast and like reflect on that. And then I'm going to spend time with my twin flame and then we're going to heal together. And then, you know what I mean? And it just goes on and on. And then I'm going to do a salt bath and then I'm going to do this and that and then a sound healing. And at night I'm going to go to a drum circle and la 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 and like <laughs> people don't necessarily realize that um our energy bodies have to like they have to get used to like our like our spiritual abilities are a um a sort of a muscle and they have to get stronger and stronger and stronger and we're not necessarily designed to be like tuned in to the highest spiritual energies all of the time like we are in human bodies and we are also designed to take time where we're not connecting with that really high energy of our, our soul. That might sound strange, but like where we're not intentionally connecting with that. And we are rather like grounded here and focusing on replenishing our own energies. So psychic burnout can happen when there is a, it can happen very, very quickly or it can happen slowly. But essentially what causes it is that there is an imbalance between giving psychic energies and receiving psychic energies. And so for some people, they might give slightly more than what they receive. Maybe they're giving, you know, 60% of their psychic energies to others, and then they're giving 40% to themselves. Well, they're not going to get psychic burnout right away. But after, you know, years of doing that, after several years, they might find themselves really depleted and like thinking, I don't want to help people anymore. I don't want to be the neighborhood psychic. You know, I don't want to be the one in my friend's group that's always helping um, with giving intuitive messages and things like that so it comes from that imbalance and so many of us are so kind like I know the people that are watching these videos that I know that you guys are just the sweetest kindest souls who just want to help everybody like and just help the world and just super super sensitive um, but if you are routinely giving 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 spiritually to others or routinely engaged in really intense healing you can get burnout over time if it's not balanced with replenishing your energies in the physical world another thing that can cause psychic burnout is not having enough time alone and this is particularly the case if you so happen to be a naturally born healer any of us our energy bodies are templated as natural healers meaning that when we go around other people even if we're not intentionally trying to heal them our our energy body our aura will absorb some of their energies to try to transmute it because we're just naturally templated this way or if you're an emotional healer when you go out into the world and you see someone you know being sad your your energy body functions like a sponge and you take some of that on and there's a big debate about whether we can turn this ability off these healing abilities off I believe that um, that's not usually the case like a lot of times we can we can maybe tune them down intentionally but some people have abilities that cannot be turned off that are on all the time 
Um, and so if you're watching and you have a lot of like, you know, you get like aches and pains, you know, when you're around people who are like limping or who are injured and you feel really emotional after going out in the world and stuff like that, then you probably have some of these natural healing abilities. Um, and so people who are natural healers, even if you have no training as a healer, even if you have no title as a healer and you are not doing this work professionally, but you're just born as a healer, then you need time alone to clear the energies every single day. Um, and if you don't get enough time alone, you can find that, you know, after spending, even after doing something amazing, like even after going on a, maybe a, say, like vacation with a group of friends, you might feel like giving up on life because even though what you did was really fun, that whole time you might have been absorbing all the energies from all your friends or things like that. So, so not having enough time alone is definitely a cause of psychic burnout. Another thing that can cause psychic burnout is not getting enough rest and not getting enough self-care or not engaging in enough self-care. Rest is very, very important. Sleep is very, very important important. When we are asleep, that is a primary time where our psychic energies are restored. When we are asleep, even though oftentimes we don't remember, that's also when we're able to get healings um, in the higher realms. When we talk to our spirit guides, we, we know our body and our mind to replenish when we're asleep, but a lot of people don't know that our psychic energies also replenish. So if we routinely are only getting a couple hours of sleep a night or we're not getting enough, that can lead to burnout on a physical level for sure and a mental level, but on top of that, it can lead to burnout on a psychic level as well. We also can get psychic burnout um, by not caring enough for ourselves. And I think when it comes to self-care, the people who are most susceptible to getting psychic burnout this way are those that are directly caring for others, especially um, people who have children, where you're in a role of constantly having to care for that young one all the time. And if you're caring for them in a spiritual way, if you're if you're attending to the needs of their soul and you're tuned into what they need emotionally and spiritually, then you're giving out psychic energy. And that has to be balanced with caring for our own selves. That has to be balanced with caring for our own energies and receiving spiritually as well. Another thing that can cause psychic burnout, which is one that has really gotten me a lot over the years, is constantly trying to help heal people or just giving like little psychic messages like here and there all throughout the day and constantly, constantly trying to be of spiritual service to everybody around you all day long. So I have been a professional psychic for about three years now, and for the first two and a half years, I would just wake up and like right as soon as I would wake up, I would turn on my phone. I always had Facebook messages. I always had text messages, and it was always people, you know, for the most part, like people just asking little things, and I would like channel little messages for everyone. I would do that for a couple hours in the morning, and then right after that, I would do um, my readings, and at first I had no idea that psychic burnout was a thing, so I would do like five readings right in a row which is not healthy like but anyway I would do like five readings right in a row and just give 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 just give out psychic energies to everyone and transmit healing frequencies to them and then as soon as I finish with that like as soon as I finish with that it usually is like right when Zaire would come home um Zaire is my twin flame so it's right when Zaire would come home and I would like absorb all his energies like I would take them from him all his energies that he accumulated um, throughout his work day because he's very sensitive. He's an emotional healer So I would like take that from him and like transmute it in my physical body And then after that I would record a YouTube video and give more healing energies to everybody And that's all I did like 100% of the time that I was awake I was trying to be of spiritual service if I had any extra time Maybe I would channel like a post uh, for my blog and I would intentionally put healing energies into the words or on Facebook or all that stuff, I would just do this all the time, and guess what? I had psychic burnout all the time. Like in a typical week, I would feel completely burnt out psychically six days out of seven. Even though I had terrible, terrible psychic burnout, I would somehow manage to just like summon the energies from the divine to like get more psychic energies to give away to other people. And it took me a while to realize that even though it's so wonderful to be of service by assisting others, that's not something that can be sustained 100% of the time, day after day after day after month, you know, and 
and I wondered why do I feel so tired when I wake up every day? It, it really got to a point for me where it's I realized that there was definitely something not quite right. Like I definitely had some type of burnout because I would go to sleep and occasionally asleep for like 20 straight hours or more. I wasn't giving myself that like rest and relaxation or permission to just be in my own energy when I was awake. So I just started sleeping more and more and more and that still happens to me and that's still how I know, oh, I'm approaching psychic burnout. Like I'll go to sleep, you know, say I go to sleep at 11 o'clock at night and I wake up the next day and it's like 3.30 p.m. and I'm like, okay, well, I guess I need to spend more time caring for myself during the day. The other thing that can really, really cause psychic burnout is doing psychic or healing work without a proper exchange of energy. So when I first became a psychic and I saw that people were charging like $100 or $200 for readings, I thought, shame on those people for charging that amount of money they're taking advantage of people. What I realized over time is that when you do readings or spiritual services like over and over again for free or for a very low cost, there's not a proper exchange of energy because essentially you're giving so much to that client or that friend and what they're giving you back is not equal. And so while I would never, I do not believe in charging exorbitant amounts of money for spiritual services, you've got to have some type of exchange. Otherwise you will get psychic burnout, especially if you do that all the time. So if you feel an outpouring of love and appreciation for a friend or family member or something in your life and you want to do like an oracle card reading for them or a Reiki reading because you feel so filled like with how they've helped you in your life, then I don't see any problem with that. However, if you find yourself in a situation where you're giving away, you know, healing energies, again, even if this isn't your profession, but you just find yourself going throughout the day, having conversations, healing conversations with everyone you come in, in contact with or stuff like that. That will lead to psychic burnout over time. So if you're doing this work, it's really important, whether you're doing it informally or formally, to have some type of exchange. And it does not need to be a monetary exchange, but you wanna get as close as you can to it being an equal exchange. Let's say that you are really holding space for a friend because that is a form of healing. You may be really holding space for a friend of yours who's also a twin flame and who's going through this process. That is a use of your psychic energy that you are intentionally holding a part of your field to transmute that person's energy. That is a psychic service. Maybe it's not really appropriate. You would never ask your friend for money, but maybe they can walk your dog, you know? Maybe they can walk your dog once a week or maybe they make you dinner every now and then or make you cookies or whatever it is, but there should be an exchange. And if there's not a an exchange that's very very close to equal then you will find yourself getting really spiritually depleted over time and you'll have to course correct and this is one of the hardest things for people who are so sensitive and so kind is to to ask for something in return but it is a skill that we all need to be able to develop so that we don't get depleted of the energies that we are here to bring to the world all right, so I hope you guys have enjoyed part one of this video series on psychic burnout. And please stay tuned for part two. Thank you so much for watching, as always, and namaste.